What's going on, my brothers and sisters? Welcome to the Andy Elliott One Percenter Podcast. We're so glad you're here today. We have Roger Long, our newest member to the Elliott Group. How you doing, brother? Having the best day ever, man. Having the best day ever. Well, I wanted to bring you on the podcast. You're the newest guy to the Elliott Group. You kind of leapfrogged over a bunch of people that wanted to be on here. We got the Macklins. They're like, what's it's talking about? Roger's going before us. We got Rye. He was a little frustrated this morning. Oh, like, yeah. Roger. And Roger's new. But the reason why I picked it is you have an interesting story. All of our guys have an interesting story. But you're the first person that ever came out and told me <laughs> you did not like me the entire time you trained away from us until you met me in person and started working for us. So I took that to heart. And I wanted to kind of expose that and then talk to you about your journey. Because you were a rock star selling cars in Fargo. Where are you from? South Dakota. Sioux Falls. It's all the same to me. It's Dakota. <laughs> what do you do there? What is there to do out there outside of Nothing. ice fishing Eskimos? There's hunting, there's fishing, <laughs> and there's a bunch of bars, and that's about it. I love it, brother. So you're from South Dakota, North Dakota? I'm sorry? South Dakota. South Dakota, <laughs> Fargo, right? Same place. And you were crushing it. You're killing it with Andy's training. So I'm going to let you take over the story real quick. You absolutely dominated with Andy's training. We'll get into the, the podcast and go right into this. They want to hear small talk from me. They want to hear about your story. They want to hear about the adversity, the come up, because you crushed it. I mean, the numbers you put up are ridiculous. All right, so let's start, let's start with the fact that when you started training with Andy, you started training with who? Yeah, it was Ian. So my first month, I only made like 3500 or four grand, okay. And I realized like day one, I was sitting on the lot, and I was like, dude, there's no way in hell that this is going to be my life, and I'm going to sit out here in the heat. Yeah. So I started Googling. Andy L or like car sales training of course he pops up I start watching videos well then I bought the 0 to 100k course I made 10 grand my next month second month then I sold 21 cars the top guy beat me by one car Every- and at this point people are like what are you doing yeah because it's month two everyone's like what the heck are you doing yeah I just kept my mouth shut just kept doing my thing well my first full year I became the number one Hyundai salesman in the entire state of South Dakota Granted, there's more cows than people, so really, is it that big of a claim? I don't know. That's a good accomplishment, though, man. Because typically, you're not a typical sales guy. Would you agree? Yeah. Your personality type, you're more of an analytical, the way you think. I work with you. You work for me directly now. <laughs> Funny enough, not liking me to work for me. And the way you think, the way you operate, you're very process-driven. A lot of salespeople just go, go. They wing it. You like your processes A to Z. So the 0 to 100, then you went into private coaching with Ian Macklin. Uh, tell us about that. Well, Ian just really helped me understand, I guess, when I got stuck, I'd call him, or exactly like you said, I'm very analytical, so I wanted to know these word tracks to a T, but then sometimes we don't get to know, well, what if they say this, and so I'd always call Ian, I'm like, what if they say this, because I needed to be the guy that was prepared, he's like, dude, sometimes you're just overthinking this, let's just slow down, be yourself, and you'll be cool. Right. So he, he was just more there to guide me along the way when I started to go like way off course, if that makes sense. And he's pretty hard on you? Oh, yeah. Pretty hard on you. So I got to ask, man, why didn't you like me? Because whenever you'd speak, whenever I'd show up on your calls Wednesday, you'd say things, and obviously I'm a little bit younger, I'm 21 at the time, I was 19 and 20, but you'd say things and it would make me have to look in the mirror, and I was like, I'm not that guy, go, shut the hell up. Okay. I don't want to listen to you, I didn't, because you really made me have to think about myself, and I just wasn't mentally there yet, if that makes sense. Yeah, of course, so you're younger generation, you're millennial generation, right? Correct. You are the smartest generation, I believe that. Hustlers, you want instant gratification. A lot of your generation wants that instant gratification. You're unique. You did the work. You bought the training. You've invested how much with Andy in that first year? Nineteen thousand eight hundred dollars. So twenty grand. Uh, twenty grand. What'd you go make your first year? Three hundred thousand. Three hundred thousand dollars. And you're crazy. <laughs> Left Fargo, North Dakota, or wherever you're from, man, in the tundra or whatever, the cold and the heat or the cold and the ice. You come work for Andy. You trained with Ian. You're close with Ian. He had a partnership and a bond. He was your coach. I know Ian's brutal with his coaching, very blunt, but he gets results. You got massive results. We painted the picture of what this would be like to deter you from coming from the very rep mountaintop to coming working for us. What's this? What's your experience been like working for the Elliott Group now, coming from where you were, the money you were making, to where you are right now? What's that like? So you, I want you to be very, just very upfront and honest. Tell, just tell them how it is working for the Elliott Group. <laughs> Look, they try. They always try to paint a picture. It's the only group I've known to try to tell you to not work for them. Like everyone's like, I need, I need people, I need people, and they paint this beautiful picture, and you get there, and it's kind of like the grass is greener on the other side. Yeah. Well, these guys are very upfront. They're like, you don't want to work for us. The hours are awful. We'll call you at three in the morning. You better be prepared. Well, I said, yeah, that's cool. That's the way it is. This isn't, this isn't a job. This is a lifestyle. Yeah. At the end of the day, like my phone doesn't stop ringing now. Now I'm getting calls at two in the morning from guys, dude. 
my wife just left me, and then you have to have that conversation. Or hey, and dude, you're I'm really, 21, dude. Yeah, you have a, you're not married. <laughs> but it's the coolest but you thing. Yourself that way. It's the coolest thing when you wake up to a text at five in the morning because you're going to the gym and you're like, dude, the conversation we had last night, last night changed my life. I That's that. the coolest, most rewarding thing. But this is truly a lifestyle. And look, you go make 30 grand. I mean, by the end, I was making 30 grand consistently. It was like clockwork. I showed up when I wanted. It was the coolest thing. Everyone's like, oh, well, I'm on A. I got the A schedule, the B schedule. Why the C schedule? I'd show up, I'd make calls for two hours, I'd dip for three, and I'd come back, I'd sell my cars, and I'm out. I could do what I wanted. And now it's like, I got to work 18 hours a day to even stay afloat. Like, I'm just getting my teeth kicked in left and right. Yeah. Why do you think that is? Well, I think it's something that a lot of people struggle with in sales. I really, because you go to a new job, mm. obviously the Elliott Group is a bunch of alphas, the best in the field, right? Yeah. All of us were number one at what we did. So then you go and you struggle, and then you have to like try and refine yourself. And I tried to become someone I wasn't, and I'm realizing that that was the mistake I was making, and I was hired to be myself. That's 1,000% why we hired you. Even though I found out you didn't like me before we hired you. <laughs> I was like, I'm going to have some fun with this guy. This is going to be a blast. Re, uh, kind of reshaping your life. Because i got to take you from where you are and get you to where you need to go very fast and as fast as possible. Because you're not going to make 30 grand a month out of the gate with our company. It's not possible. Superstars come here and they break. And so now that you've been through the process from selling cars, being a high-level producer, and really finding out what you're about, what you're like with your personal relationships uh, within the company, how would you define yourself and kind of what this has been like for you as you've evolved to a more elite version of yourself? Because you're not there. We've got a lot of work to do. We have a lot of uh, skills to instill in you. But what's this change been like for you? Are you enjoying this process? Are you enjoying this relentless pursuit that Andy has us on? I love it. I wouldn't give it up for the world. But I, I would say it's a, it's a never-ending boot camp because to truly work here, I mean, look behind us. It says elite sales training. Well, we got core values here, and you look at them every day, and it's like, well, did I really outwork everyone? And when I say outwork everyone, I think, did I outwork everyone in the world? Mm -hmm. Because I know that there are people out here, other salespeople that want to be a part of this team, and some of these guys down. are coming for me. Yeah. And the second I start to let off that gas, it's game over. Yeah. And I'm not going to lose this over me not being the hardest working. So then it, it's just really a never-ending thing, and it's like it's not just getting better at selling. It's getting better at, at a personal relationship. And it's like if that ain't right, then you're not going to be able to sell it right. So it's just like – never ending loop and like am I in the best shape ever do I look like a Navy SEAL not yet but we're getting there yeah. I've lost a ton of weight since last time we were in Mexico I'm getting a lot more defined and it's like you go to the gym then you come here then you go home you have your relationship but like then I got to keep working at the end of the day so it's just never ending and so it's like I said a never ending boot camp but I love it okay so I have to ask you this now that you have this new skill this mindset because all I'm putting you through is what Andy put me through forever since I met him two and a half years, going on our third year together. But the boot camp lifestyle. And it is. It's, it's defining your destiny. It's de destiny by design is what we call it, right? Because we're going to define and we're going to design our destiny, our lifestyle, these hidden little tricks that we can pick up along the way to have the life that we want. You're here now. Mm -hmm. You're running completely differently. You're elite. You're moving forward. You would go back and sell probably, what, double the cars. Oh, would be. <laughs> what would you give? Well, it would be crazy, right? If yeah. You think about going back into the automotive now after you've been out with Andy for just a short period of time because you see it now. It's real. It's um, it's a takeover. It, it, it's, it's amazing what you can get your mind and body to do when you're constantly put into the flame and forged into what we're forging you into. You go back. No, let's not do that. You don't go back. What advice would you give to your people that you coach now that they can see you, let's say, on this podcast – to see it more real, that you came from the raw, I mean, you were on the mountaintop, bro, to getting your ass kicked every day, because you do, and I, I know you're going to make about, what, five grand this month, Yeah. Okay? <laughs> and probably next month you're going to make that, and you're learning, and you're growing, and you're scaling, and I see you coming, that hardened, not hardened to be hard, but that hardened shape, that uh, the exoskeleton we're putting on you to strengthen you, what advice would you give to your people selling cars to help them become more efficient and better? Well, I think a lot of us say that we're so busy, and Andy always breaks this down all the time. They go, look, like look, you're working, what, 10 hours a day? You work five, six days a week, so you're working 50, 60 hours. That means you're working about 200 to 240 hours a week, yeah. or a month. a month. And then it's like, dude, you sell 10 cars. It takes two to three hours to sell cars, so you really have 180 to 210 hours that you're sitting there. Okay, repeat that so you understand. Break that down again for them. They're working literally 30 hours a week at 10 cars a month. Yeah. I'm 30 cars a month. So if you're selling, I'm sorry, 10 cars a month, 
You're working. If you break down the hours, you are truly working hours. 30 hours. Okay, like break that down again, because they need to understand that. That's very good math. I love that. You really need to look at what you're doing through the day. A lot of us say we're busy, but we're not. We have filler activities. We're playing on our phones. We're having that conversation at 10 o'clock. Hey, what are you guys getting for lunch? You circle back three times before it's 11:30, and you've wasted an hour and a half of your time. Yeah. If you sell 10 cars, it takes two to three hours to sell a car on average. Some are going to go longer. Some are going to go shorter. So take the number of cars you sell, multiply it by three hours. If it's 10, that's 30 hours. If you work 10 hours a day on average times six days a week, that's 60 hours a week yeah. times four is 240. So you're truly only working 30 hours, which means you have 210 hours where you're sitting there. I'm what not. are you doing in that time? Are you getting better? Are you working towards selling a car or are you actively selling a car? You should only be doing three things. Yeah. Why are we having an hour long conversation about what we're finding for lunch? And I can say that because I did it. I've been in your guys' shoes. I know what you're doing right now. Yeah. You're probably watching this at work so you don't have to be making calls because you don't know what to say on the phone. Okay? Look, dude, I know where you've been. I love it. I love it. So where you're going, I I'm going to take a step back. When you were selling cars and you got into the industry, the Zero to 100K was your starting point. Mm -hmm. How long did you go without a coach? I would say, so I bought the Zero to 100K my first month, mm -hmm. and I got really ingrained, just like you said, I'm very analytical, and I tried to follow it so process orientated. Yeah. And I actually, I didn't sell a car, and I was like, screw this. this, this ain't right. But what happened is, is it's just like I talked about earlier, I was trying to be Andy Elliott when I was selling these cars, and I realized he always says, you're not a first rated version of me, you're a first rated version of yourself. Powerful. And so I took the content and I said, okay, well, these are the right questions to be asking. So then I took them, I molded it to me, I would say at the end of my second month is when Ian really got involved in my life, and then from there he trained me for a year and a half. Okay, and what was that training like? What was his? Uh, what was your regiment with Ian? What was that like? I would call him when I got stuck. I wasn't a guy that Ian needed to call and babysit. I I, okay. I would call him Explain when I needed. Explain that to me real quick, because you now you see it. There are people that we work with, they have this expectation. You need to call me. Like you need to check in all the time. Like me, you. We need to call you. We need to check in with you. We're not. We're not working with car salesmen, are we? We work with automotive business professionals. That's what we call you. That's what we train you like. That's what we teach you. That's what we instill in you. So you were the one right out of the gate. You don't need to call me. You don't need to babysit me. But you, you would reach out. Correct. Why do you think people don't reach out? Like they don't reach out to me. They don't reach out to you until they're crumbling, burning down. Day one, they have a bad day. Day two, they, they're, they're, they're crumbling. And then they'll call us on day six after the meltdown. I need help. What's going on? I'm freaking out. Why don't they call right away? Pride, ego. What do you think it is? I, I truly think it's ego. I think ego? people are scared to say, to raise their hand and say, hey, I have a problem. Well, I would rather address that problem day one the second it's happening so I can get over it faster. That. So that was always the conversation with Ian is like, dude, I'm running to this problem. It didn't matter if it was 1030. I mean, Ian's a great guy. He would answer. He'd be like, dude, this is why I love you because you're calling at 1030. Tell me you got a problem. Let's figure it out. Yeah. But the deal is I think a lot of these guys get so wrapped up in their ego and they won't let that go to become a better version of themselves. And a lot of them don't realize that Ian showed me right away that this can become a business. Oh, yeah. That you at the end of the day, car salesmen are a business within a business. They, su they supply you with everything. All you got to do is show up and work. So at a certain point, once you get good enough, once you're making 20 grand, well, you could hire someone, teach someone to make your calls, and now you got two of you making calls, and you just got to show up to sell cars. Double the production. And he really showed me that bigger picture, and I don't think a lot of people realize that, nor necessarily do a lot of people want to get to that level, but we all want to make more money, so why aren't we treating this like it's a business? It's the analogy you always make. Sean always says something about, look, if you played sports, you'd go after school and you'd practice for an hour, right? And you'd have game day on Saturday. Yep. It's the same thing. I mean, you guys treat this like it's daycare, but this is your life. Exactly. Why are you not getting better at this? Lifestyle. It's a lifestyle. So when you're when you're in automotive, now you make the switch. Mm -hmm. Like, man, I'm gonna go work for Andy. What was that like? What, what like? I know the conversation we had with you to deter you. So do not come here. Mm -hmm. This isn't for you. You'll never make it. What the hell is wrong with you? What made you say, hey, man, I'm coming to work there. I'm going to put my life in, into this. I'm going to devote to this. What was it that you saw in our company that made you want to come be with Andy Elliott, be with the Elliott group and become one of the coaches? Because you know, now we weren't joking and you stay, mm -hmm. you're the, one of the hardest working guys. I'll give you that. You are one of the hardest working guys we have in the company right now. I'm proud of you for that. But when we told you, dude, you're going to take a massive pay cut. You're not going to make this money. You're not as good as you think you are. You're like, I will prove all of you wrong. Where does that come from? And why did you decide to follow through with that? What, what's going on in your head, man? Well, I, I think it starts from when I was a kid because I grew up with a single mom working two jobs. Yeah. Then I got kicked out when I was 18. I was still in my senior year of high school. I was going to college full-time. I then had to couch surf and figure out. Then I had to get my own place. I was working full-time. 
And I think it just comes from like watching my mother work so hard and just not wanting to end up in that same position. And then I got into cars, I did really well. And then what happened is January, I called the inn because I started to bump heads with my managers. We all have that. It's just the car industry, right? Yeah. I say, look, dude, if I move down there, can you help me get a job? He calls me. He's like, you're the craziest person I know. <laughs> like, what are you doing? So I flew out for a seminar. He introduced me to Matt. There was this weird, like, I'm living in a movie. There's a bunch of weird coincidences. I get the job to come work at Van Chevy down here. Yeah. I flew back. I thought about it for two days. I packed up my stuff. I was out here in the next week. I made the decision. I moved. But I made the decision because in my mind, I was like, I just want to be as close to these guys as possible. Of course, I'd love a job. We all want a job here. We say we do. And then yeah. you get here and it's like, oh, God, what did I do? But that was like, I didn't think it would become a reality, but I'd written it down so many times. It was on my mirror. I'm crazy. I got things in my mirror that I repeat to myself every morning. It's my affirmations, whatever. And so I go kill it, and eventually I get here, and it's just like now I just I just want to help people. I mean, when I was 17, I was calling businesses. Like how many people in se at 17 were in their parents' basement thinking about doing that. trying to cold call businesses and not understanding selling? Mm -hmm. Like I just wanted to be around here to understand selling, and now I understand the bigger picture of the lives we get to change. And now it's like, I don't even care about the money. I'm going to make five grand this month. Cool. Hey, I took a massive pay cut. You see that? And it's going to continue that way because all I care about is building that foundation and changing lives. I love and that. as time goes on, the money will come, but it's not about the money. I absolutely love that. And I forgot that. So I forgot this. So tell us a little bit about that because you went to Van Chevrolet. Van Chevrolet is a client of ours. Yeah. And you were so indoctrinated into Andy Elliott training. The GM, Matt, reaches out to Andy and says, hey, dude, you got to take this kid on. You got to at least give him a shot, right? That came from a GM. We, we knew your intent. And I forgot about the Van Chevy um, pit stop for a minute. Mm -hmm. Great store, massive store. You go there, take you out of your element of, the, of Fargo or North Dakota, South Dakota, put you at Van Chevrolet. What was that like? Because you didn't do, I mean, that's a store. That's a big boy store, right? It big is. Boy, big girl, whatever you want to call it. That's a big ass store. Well, it was a massive shot because you're coming from farm country land where if you leave Sioux Falls, it's three to four hours of like cornfields no matter where you're going like it that's it so then to come down to phoenix where there's over a million people you're in a big store and just like i did here the f i started like halfway through the month that first month i only sold four cars and the entire time i was like what am i doing and ian has said this i called him he hung up the phone on me because all i was doing was complaining he's like dude you're being such i don't want to say it but he's being you're like he said you're being such a wussy right now and he called me back later and he goes are you done are you over yourself Okay, so let's take a step back. You call in, mm -hmm. you're here, Van, you're getting your butt kicked. Yeah. You call in, you start complaining about all these things that are going wrong instead of looking in the mirror, instead of taking that temperature check and owning your crap, and you call in and he hangs up on you. Boop, conversation's over, he calls you back when? A few hours later. Okay, and then what, how'd that go? Uh, he, he really checked me. He goes, dude, are you done? And I was like, what do you mean? He goes, dude, first off, you, you were the best at what you did why are you in your head? Yeah. He goes, you're trying to be someone you're not. He goes, dude, you don't even know the managers. I know that for a fact because you told me you didn't know this person. So he said, go get your grounding, go understand everyone, and do what you do best. He goes, stop caring what these guys think about you. He goes, you're putting this weird pressure on yourself that really doesn't need to exist. He said that to me. I snapped out of it. The next month, I, I almost took out the top guy on my department, and they were like, oh, where did this kid come from? Who is this guy? Well, and then I had a, a bad credit customer who ended up bumping 500 bucks, and then everyone was like, who is this kid? He's going to be something. And then I was making 30 grand a month. I only worked there three months. Yeah. That Probably. first two weeks, I made, I sold four cars. I questioned what I did. I put my back against a wall. I addressed my problems, and I took off. And then I made 30 grand. And then you guys were like, dude, all right, come on. I absolutely love that. So you're here. You're rocking and rolling. You're crushing it with us. You're taking, the, taking our industry by storm. You're serving a lot of people. You're helping a lot of men and women change their lives. You absolutely love what you do. What do you contribute that skill to? Where do you find that passion for people? Because that's a servant heart. We call that a servant heart. Servant heart leadership is required to be in the Elliott Group. Because you come here for money. You see, you've seen one of the top guys come here that was all about money driven. One of the top salesmen in the country, and he sm got smashed. He lasts what three weeks? Gone. Yeah. You do it for money, you ain't gonna make it. So you have the servant heart leadership attitude. You're helping people. Where do you think that comes from? Because that's that's a really cool thing to have in somebody. It's rare. Well, I think it comes from understanding that everyone in life has a messed up story. Yeah. Like, that's just the reality of the situation. And we think, oh, whoa, me, when we start beating on our victim drum. But reality, almost everyone's got a worse life than you. And it was something that you guys showed me. And 
it's almost like I'm, I feel like I'm the second generation because all of you guys have been here for, I mean, you've been here since the beginning, but all these yeah. guys have been eight months to a year and I'm one of the newer guys, right? Two months ago. So you guys have taught me all of these things that have changed my life and it's like, I just want to continue this spider web and impact as many lives as possible. And I get to share the knowledge that you guys shared with me to these guys and connect with them because I know what they're going through. I've been in the market they're in. A yeah. lot of them are my age. And it, they really relate because they're like, dude, you're my age and, yeah. and you're there. Like I had someone at this last seminar who was like, dude, I remember in October when we were sitting here next to each other and you told me you were going to move down here to sell cars. And I told you it was a bad idea because the grass is, isn't always greener. Love but he's like, you chased it. Mm-hmm. And he's like, now look at you. You're, you inspire me. And, and you see like the fire in their eyes. And it's just so rewarding to wake up to these texts. You changed my life. Yeah. And at the end of the day, it's not really me. You guys are the ones putting in the work. You know what I mean? They're the ones investing in themselves, but it's just really cool to see these people change. Yep. Because, it, dude, a lot of us are going to have families one day, and I think it just more comes from not wanting other, like, not wanting kids to go through what I went through as a kid. I like that. That's, that's true. That's where my, my passion for people come. I don't want them to feel my pain. And if we have a servant heart leadership, we can remove the low living beliefs, scale them past whatever they've ever seen or have been a part of, make it real, and bring mm-hmm. hope. It's over. So, what's your full name? Roger Jean Long the Fourth. R- Roger Jean Long the Fourth. If you guys want to get a hold of Roger, you can reach out. Actually, drop your number, your personal cell phone number. If you want to know more about his story, how he's scaling with Andy, who he is within the company, a little bit more about Roger, reach out to him. Drop him your cell phone number. 651-785-4490. Okay, and so this is Roger Long. You're more than welcome to reach out. He'll tell you his story. He's a master at posting cars, writing ad copy, really good at what he does. Servant heart leadership. He'll take care of you. He'll absolutely help you dominate the game. Roger, do you want to leave off with anything? Dude, this is, and I'm just going to circle back to this one last thing. This is why I didn't like Sean in the beginning. You guys really need to go look at yourself in the mirror and ask yourself, what am I doing? And when you can address these issues, I mean, Sean told me the other day, he goes, dude, you're an enigma. I don't understand you. What did I do that night? I went home. I studied from a guy that Sean said he studied. I gave him a test back the next day and I said, this is me. Figure me out so we can address these problems. Took action. You guys need to stop sitting on the sidelines and you need to start taking action. Let's go. That's it. Just start doing things. All right, my brothers and sisters, you know the drill. Rewire your minds. Let's go get paid what we're worth. We'll see you on the next episode. Well, you made it till the end of the video. You're a true one percenter. I've already got your next training video lined up and ready to go. Click on it. Before you do that, like the video, subscribe. Make sure you set your notifications. Every single day I drop out free F-R-E-E, free training videos for you. Click on the next video. And by the way, if you loved it, share it with a friend. Do that for me. Thank you so much. Let's kill it.